Grok 3 versus ChatGPT versus DeepSeek. Who wins? We're going to find out today. And this is based on testing out the smartest AI on Earth, according to Elon Musk. So we're going to be putting it through the paces, comparing each model, seeing which is the best, which one performs the best, and which one has the strongest points for each. So let's get straight into it. If you want to get access, I've got access via a premium account on Twitter at grok.com, G-R-O-K.com, and then you can select from the drop down Grok3. We've also got ChatGPT. We'll be comparing directly with O3 Mini for reasoning tasks and DeepSeek R1 for reasoning tasks as well. So let's get straight into it. The first thing we're going to be testing is we're going to say to Grok, write a Python script of a ball bouncing inside a spinning Tesseract, as you do. And that should put it through the basis and we'll see what we get back from each model. Now, what I've typically found is that Grok is actually really, really fast at replying. So you can see here, for example, Grok has already spat out the Python code. Whereas, for example, GPT-03 Mini from ChatGPT is still thinking about things. And DeepSeek, well, that's not even come back to us with any thoughts just yet. So in terms of speed... Grok is unbelievably powerful. I think they've got 200,000 GPUs running underneath a supercomputer called Colossus. I have not just made that up, like that's actually fact. And so what we're going to do is through this now. I'm going to grab the Python script. We're going to plug it into this Python script previewer. Like you can see, we'll hit run and see how that works and how it performs. And there we have the spinning Tesseract. Boom shakalaka. Now that was using the normal version of Grok. Now we have the Python script back from ChatGPT. So we'll duplicate the and we'll test this out side by side. So we're going to plug the script from ChatGPT inside here and run the Python code. And that doesn't seem to work at all in the preview. As you can see, we get an error back. And DeepSeek has totally given up on us. We might have to switch to DeepSeek version 3 because it says the server is busy. Try again later. So DeepSeek has failed. ChatGPT has failed. But Grok is absolutely smashing it. Fair play to it. So next up, we're going to test it for writing capabilities. And this is for creating a landing page, right? So we're going to say, create a one-page website for the niche, video SEO ranking service, make it beautiful, modern, sleek, etc. Emojis, headings, here's a keyword. Here's some information about me. Here's some links to our funnels. And here's some information about how to create the page, all right? So we're going to take that content like so. Then we're going to go over to Grok, plug that in right here. It is unbelievably fast. It's just ridiculous. Now we're going to go onto a new chat inside chat gpt we'll use o3 mini again plug that in and then inside deep seek i'm going to switch to deep seek version 3 because it looks like deep seek r1 is not working right now which kind of automatically puts it out of the race but hopefully we get better results with deep seek version 3 so we've got the html surprise surprise from grok already let's test it out see what we get back and that is looking pretty nice already just from the preview here so i'm going to open this up here we go not bad at all. Not bad. Let's scroll down the page. It's okay. I mean, the design could be better, right? I really like this bit here. But if you scroll down like the page, it doesn't look so good. The The design is, is kind of weird, weird colors. It could be 10 times better. Let's be honest with you. So now we're going to take the code from ChatGPT, like you can see. We'll plug that in. And this is the content from ChatGPT 03 Mini, which is, you know, 03 is the latest model from ChatGPT. And it's not great. Like, it's put the title in black font on a black background. Doesn't make any sense. It does have the navigation bar here and it does actually work the links, but straight away, I mean, the landing page is broken, right? If we look at the rest of the content, it's okay, but you've got like a button in the middle of the page, which doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, neither of them are great. I'm gonna go with probably Grok and ChatGPT are tied. DeepSeek has failed on us again, and that's using DeepSeek version one. So you might have to switch this up in a second. What I'm gonna do just to get creative and focus on solutions, not problems, I'm going to grab DeepSeek R1, which we can run locally with Olama, and we're just going to use that as a model instead. So if we plug that in, we've got Olama working in the background over there, and now we can give it prompts. So I'm going to give it exactly the same prompt, like so. We're going to use DeepSeek R1 locally because the online version doesn't seem to work at all. So now it's starting to create the content, and we'll see what it comes back with. Bear in mind, this is 7B, right? And it's a distilled model of DeepSeek, so it's not the full version, but the full version online doesn't work right now. It says the server is busy. That's the best I could do for you. I'm trying to help you here. I'm trying to get you the best results possible, right? Now, it's actually creating that in Markdown, from what I can see. So it's not creating the HTML, which isn't ideal. So you can see here on the DeepSeek R1 version, we're not getting great results. I've got another idea just to give it one more chance. I want to be fair to DeepSeek. 
It's not giving us much on the local version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to DeepSeek on Perplexity and we're going to use Reasoning Mode, DeepSeek R1. We'll just let that landing page work in the background. Now that's going to take a little while to go. So what we're going to do is whilst we're waiting for DeepSeek R1 to catch up in the race, we're going to move on to the next task and I'll come back to this in a second once it's loaded. But so far I would say Grok and ChatGPT are tired on that and DeepSeek R1 totally failed. Let's be honest. Yeah, so even inside Perplexity, it's still just giving us the content. There's not actually any HTML there. I mean, honestly, from what I can see, like DeepSeek R1 is really letting the team down here. There's only so many chances I can give it. We'll say create this as HTML and we'll move on to the next task inside Grok. So next up, what we're gonna do is we're going to ask Grok to create an article, right? A blog right here. So we're gonna say create an SEO optimized article for this. Keyword equals, we'll put something like Grok3 AICO content outline. We can use this default content creation. We've got some source context about us. Basically, what we're trying to do here is create a nicely optimized SEO article that is engaging and useful to read. All right. So we'll go into Grok and we'll ask it to do its magic there. We'll do the same inside ChatGPT03. And actually, I'm going to use GPT40 for this because, you know, Reasoning models are not great for creating content, whereas I would say ChatGPT4 is typically better for creating the content right there. All right. And it has a nice little canvas mode for creating content. And now we're still getting the HTML back from DeepSeekR1 for the previous task. I mean, Grok is just unstoppable for creating content and for getting quick answers. So you can see, for example, Grok has already finished a long time ago. ChatGPT4 is still creating the content. Let's see how long both of these articles are. So Grok is, in total, 841 words. ChatGPT40 seems to have leveled up a lot because it's creating a longer article from what I can see than it would usually, but it's still only 645 words. So in terms of speed and in terms of length, Grok is winning. In terms of the actual content creation and readability, let's have a look what we got here. So the headline from Grok is Grok3 AICO, how I'm using AI to dominate search rankings in 2025. That's perfect. Grok, inside ChatGPT4, says Grok3 AICO, how to leverage AI for explosive search rankings. I would say both of these are pretty good headlines. I do like the way that this is formatted really nicely. Inside Grok, it's quite easy to read and scan through, but both of these are really good articles to be fair. I mean, you can feel how humanized this is. So it says, you're probably wondering how the hell do I keep up with SEO in 2025? Google's algorithms are beast. AI is taking over and your competitors are probably sweating bullets trying to outrank you. A really humanized article there. That's like so good for creating content. I honestly, I never expected Grok to be that good at creating content. Like that's probably Claude level. I would say that's Claude 3.5's level, which is goat mode right there. If we have a look at this, it says, let's cut to the chase. SEO is evolving fast. Google's algorithms are smart. Never competition brutal. And AI, it's about to flip the game upside down. These are very level. But I'm going to go with Grok for the writing. I, I would say Grok just feels a lot more humanized. It's nicely formatted. The heading is super nice. Really, really good stuff. I'm going to rate Grok probably a 9 out of 10. And I'd probably rate ChatGPT 4.0's content about a 7.5 out of 10 for humanization. Now let's come back to DeepSeek R1. We'll grab that. We'll plug that into our HTML and see what we get back. So this is the code from DeepSeek R1. I mean, there's no CSS in there. But it's just giving us the HTML. But if we go down it said it asks if we want to create css in the the separate section but honestly deep seek r1 is out the race as far as i'm concerned it's not creating as good content it lets us down the server is busy the local doesn't work properly it's not giving us html with css inside i just think the chat gpt and grok have already walked all over it which is pretty wild i do like the api from deep seek though it is good stuff next up what we're going to say is create a space invaders game in html so we're going to give that to grok and we'll give that to chat gpt we'll switch back to o3 mini that's better for reasoning and we've got the html code ready to go let's see what we got here does it work yeah that's working isn't it boom shakalaka all right let's check chat gpt so we've got the html back from chat gpt as well i mean to be honest like chat gpt's game is coded better like you get more blocks you get more space invaders enemies if we actually go back to grok's html this one right here, and we plug that into live weave. You can see that you only get four enemies, and also they don't seem to be moving down, they seem to be just moving side to side. So I would say ChatGPT won on this one. Maybe ChatGPT is better for coding, but it did lose the Python script challenge. So and what we're going to do from here is we're going to go into ChatGPT, we'll say, Give me some generic, fluffy, AI, obvious 
content and you'll see why in a second. So we've got some really fluffy content from ChatGPT and if we plug that through an AI detector, that's coming out at 100% AI detectable, right? It's very obvious that that is AI detectable content. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug that into ChatGPT 03 mini. I'm going to use exactly the same prompt in both scenarios and we shall say humanize this so it bypasses AI detectors 100% of the time. Here we go. Must be 100% non-AI detectable. We'll do the same in Grok. We'll do the same inside Perplexity Deep Reasoning Mode simply because, you know, the main website's not working. So we can just use Perplexity's method of using that for now. So we've got the content back from ChatGPT 03 Mini. Let's plug that into Zero GPT, see how we do. So that is coming back at 78%, right? So it went back from 100% error detectable to 78%. So that has reduced the AI detectability by 22%. And it doesn't really pass the test because we said, you know, it must be 100% non-AI detectable. So now we're going to take the same thing from Grok, grab that, we'll go into Zero GPT, plug that in, see what we get. And that is coming out. So that's winning at the minute. Although I wouldn't say either is great. Now we've got the content from DeepSeek R1. So let's plug that into Zero GPT, see how it performs. And that is 100% AI detectable. Now, one thing I actually forgot to do, rookie mistake, absolute new mistake, is we should have switched on think mode inside Grok because we're comparing it against GPT 03 mini and Perplexity R1. So let me do that first and then we'll come back to you with some good ideas and see what the performance is like. Just one thing to bear in mind is you do get better outputs with the Think version of Grok versus just the normal version, all right? So you've got the content back here. Let's grab this now. Here we go. Plug this in and compare. And that's come out at 95%. So actually the normal version of Grok performed better than the thought process. I mean, Grok came out first with just normal mode. ChatGPT 03 mini came out at second and DeepSeek again, didn't pass any of these. I don't know if DeepSeek has just got worse recently with all the people flooding the servers and testing out and the crazy amount of reach that it got recently, but something has happened to DeepSeek. Something has changed that. I know like Perplexity are probably hosting it locally in the US instead of going straight from the source. But still, it's very, very surprising. Now, one thing I want to show you, this is something I actually created earlier today, which is using deep research inside ChatGPT. Now, this costs $200 a month to get access to ChatGPT Pro Plan, which allows you to use deep research. If we use the same prompt inside Grok, we can actually select deep search over here. And we'll give it exactly the same prompt, which is research Grok and the latest AI updates from it. And then we'll do the same inside DeepSeek and Perplexity. Perplexity actually has a feature for this, which is deep research, all right? And we can combine the deep research mode inside Perplexity, compare it versus Grok, and compare it versus ChatGPT. Now, I would say, honestly, out of all of these, the best results you're gonna get are directly from ChatGPT 03 Mini. All right. And the reason that I say that is like, look how in-depth this is, plus all the sources included. And this is including information from today, I believe. So if we actually have a look at this, it says Grok was officially unveiled in mid-February 2025. It's got the exact time right there. Very, very in-depth article, very useful data right there. Very well researched. And how long is this content? I mean, it's absolutely insane how much content. This is better than a human would create, and it creates it faster than most people. So that comes out at 4,700 words. If you go on to Grok, we do get a decent report. I mean, look at all this, the research you get here. It's, it's really, really interesting stuff to see. It is pulling in the latest information right here. It's quoting Elon Musk and his words earlier this week on the smartest AI on earth. It's pulling in information from tweets as well, which is pretty cool. And it's got like a really nice table comparison of features as well. So it, it depends what you want here. Like for me, if I wanted all the information I could possibly get, then ChatGPT is probably still winning, right? But if I wanted like something really straight to the point, then this report from Grok is super powerful, super useful. It's based on really recent data and research. I like the way it lays out the table, the resources and the sources and the citations throughout are super easy to read. If we go into perplexity, it's taken a little while to get back to us on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a report that we actually created earlier on the same topic and this is from perplexity i would again say this is really good like you can see how it's compared the models here honestly that might be better than grok and if i had to put them in terms of order of who wins for research then i'm going to say chat gpt then perplexity 
than Grok 3. Simply because Perplexity, you know, you, you get it for free. It gives you really recent data. It cuts through a lot of the fluff. There's no fluff in here, really. And it's got a nice table as well, plus a conclusion. But ChatGPT, you can't beat the data. It just takes about 30 minutes to generate, which is the only downside. And you have to pay $200 a month for it. Now, what I would say with Grok, though, is, and this is really one of its biggest strengths, is like Grok integrates directly into a social media platform, right? And there's no real useful AI that's doing that. So, you know, Grok is an outlier in itself. It can also generate really nice images. And additionally, it can search the web. It can connect to your social media. You can actually share the conversations as well. And these conversations get indexed on Google if you want to make them public. For me, I'm going to go with Grok. Like, I, I honestly think like I probably don't need a ChatGPT subscription anymore because I get all the same processes, all the same features inside Grok. But at the same time, I also get access to the benefits of a pro plan inside, right? So why would I need ChatGPT? Why would I need to pay $200 a month for that? DeepSeek, something seems to have happened to it. So I'm going to put that last out of everything today. ChatGPT comes in second and Grok comes in number one. It just seems to be strong at everything, including writing, coding, Python code, research, generating images. It's absolutely awesome at generating images and better than ChatGPT. So that's what I'm going to stick with. We're actually going to release a Grok3 course inside the AI Profit Boardroom. That's coming soon. So make sure you sign up. We've got the price on beta right now. The prices will probably go up as we've already got 139 members inside there. This also comes with all of my best courses on automating email, social media, AI agents, web automation, AI SEO automation, and Q&A call recordings, along with a crash course on how to save hundreds of hours and make money with AI. On top of that, inside the community, you can post in here, ask us any questions, we're happy to help. And additionally, you'll get weekly calls with me. So you can just jump on calls directly with me each week. There's actually one tomorrow if you sign up today. And it's just an awesome community of high level people doing AI. So if you want to join, link in the comments description. And if you want to get a free SEO strategy session that shows you how we take websites from zero to 145,000 business month and generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales and autopilot, feel free to get that. On this free link building acceleration session, you'll get an SEO domination plan. So you get a custom tailored plan so you can generate more lead sales and profits from your website. You will discover the secrets of SEO link building. Or answer any questions you have. You learn the best link building strategy for your website, plus how to quickly outrank your competitors in link building, and how to turn SEO traffic based on what's working for us and our happy clients, like you can see right here. Feel free to get that link in the comments description. Appreciate you watching. Bye bye.